Uh, well, yes, I am um, Agustin Martinez Fasho, and I am uh, a Spire maintainer. And uh, I've been lucky to be part of the project uh, since the beginning. Um, so we will uh, share some uh, project updates. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's start by sharing some uh, numbers um, to have an idea uh, of how the the project uh, has been evolving during the last year. So I, I will show some some numbers uh, since last KubeCon in San Diego. Um, so we um, we had uh, seven releases uh, that um, included uh, more than twenty features uh, and uh, around. 40 uh, bug fixes uh, and improvements um, that uh, were done in more than uh, 230 merged PRs. Um, uh, and all, all that uh, was done by um, uh, 36 uh, different contributors. Um, so it's, uh, it's really nice to see uh, a, a lot of contributions from the community and see how this is uh, growing and growing over time. Uh, this really shows that the, the project is, uh, is really healthy. Um, so, uh, well, let's, let's get right into some of the, um, the recent accomplishment uh, done in the project. Uh, so we, we refactored the the Spire server APIs in a in a set of more like more resource oriented APIs. Um, uh, we we realized that the original APIs um, uh, that were organized in the in the node and registration APIs started to show some um, structural problems uh, in terms of how um, how the APIs were organized. Um, for example, uh, when adding some, some new functionality, it was uh, difficult to find the right place to add it, uh, maybe simply because it, it didn't actually fit well in the, in the node or registration APIs. Um, so after, after a lot of design work and feedback, um, they, they were refactored uh, in different APIs. Uh, depending on the, uh, the, on the resource, like agent, uh, bundle, entry, uh, or SVID. Um, and we also took the opportunity to uh, improve the, the consistency across the APIs um, in terms of uh, things like fascination and filtering of fields. Um, so uh, one other thing is that, uh, it, a lot of work has been done uh, to update uh, the Spire documentation, uh, adding uh, examples and, and tutorial uh, for the most uh, used and critical use cases, uh, included um, uh, well, Kubernetes, uh, OIDC authentication, um, a lot of different use cases using Envoy, uh, nested Spire, uh, Federation, um, the use of telemetry in Spire. Uh, so we have now a lot of guides uh, that can help you get started with the with the most uh, used use cases. Um, so yeah, that 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 is good. And um, we just heard from Kesley that uh, uh, he enjoyed looking at the documentation. Um, so. Um, uh, well, back, back in April, we had uh, the Spire uh, 0.10 release, uh, where we completed um, all the work uh, needed to have uh, support for uh, JOT SVs in nested Spire uh, topologies. Um, and uh, other thing important to mention is that um, over, over the past few months, we, we have been working on 
uh, uh, improving the, the client libraries that we have uh, in Go and Java. Um, so um, uh, regarding the, the, the Go Spiffy library, we saw that uh, the Go Spiffy V1 uh, started to show some signs uh, that it, it needed an update uh, because um, it was not as flexible as we wanted. Uh, it was missing some key functionality uh, like um, federation and just as bit support. Um, so earlier this year, we, we worked on, uh, on a refresh uh, of the library, uh, re rethinking it uh, from scratch. And uh, we, uh, we worked on, on the V2 which provides uh, low, uh, both low and high level uh, interfaces uh, to handle the, the common use cases uh, that uh, includes uh, establishing mutually authenticated TLS between workloads that are powered by Spiffy. Uh, it also make, makes it easy to obtain and validate um, uh, both uh, X509 and JotS bits. Um, it uh, well, it also provides all, all the resources needed uh, to federate trust between trust domains uh, using Spiffy bundles, um, and uh, all all the functionality needed to perform things like uh, bundle management, Spiffy ID handle, or um, SVID verification. So you, you can do that now in with 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 tiny amount of code. Um, also, uh, a lot of work uh, has been done in the Java Spiffy library um, uh, to provide, uh, again, new, new functionality through new interfaces. And uh, all this uh, has been done uh, in a more modular way uh, that makes, uh, makes it easier to, uh, to have a more testable library. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look uh, at the the recent releases of Aspire. So the most the most recent release uh, is uh, 0.11.1 uh, that we released, I think, at, at the end at the end of September. Uh, that. Uh, that included um, an improvement in the AWS PCA up upstream authority plugin, uh, and also uh, the option to disable rate limiting uh, of node attestation requests, uh, among among other uh, improvements and fixes. Um, in CDO 11, uh, we introduced the the refactored server APIs that I just talked about. Um, also, uh, uh, an improvement in the Unix workload attestor um, and the, the, the Kubernetes workload registrar uh, was extended um, to support the uh, tune modes that are the, the, the CRD and the reconcile modes. Um, in uh, 0.10.1, uh, the main, the main new feature was the addition to support uh, Volt as an upstream uh, authority. Uh, and in uh, 010, well, we, we had a, a bunch of new things and improvements, uh, uh, including there the, the support for JOT SVIT in Nested Spire, um, introducing the, the upstream authority plugin. Uh, there were other uh, other improvements like um, the reduction of uh, database load uh, in certain configurations and, and the ability of agents to proactively rotate in, in uh, the workloads as bits uh, when um, when there is an update in the registration. Um, so. Uh, Let's let's talk a, a little bit about uh, what is keeping uh, us busy now. 
uh, what are the things that uh, we are spending uh, time on now? Um, so, uh, well, for, for, for many reasons, uh, we have been kind of deferring 1.0 for some time. Uh, there were some uh, reasons for that, uh, like the, the refactor of the server APIs. Um, we thought that uh, having a, a well-established set of server APIs in 1.0 uh, would be a, a good thing. Uh, rather than uh, releasing Wanderro and and then do a big refactor, right? Uh, so um, that, that that was one thing. Uh, there were other things that are maybe less technical, but it's still important to decide uh, in order to to have a, a clear path uh, towards Wanderro uh, and also after Wanderro, uh, like. Uh, process decisions, including um, the release key cadence, uh, compatibility, and how we will manage versioning going forward. So th there have been a lot of things to decide uh, and to work on uh, to be able to, to finally um, have 1.0. Uh, but um, at this point, we, we are getting closer to that, and, and we really think that uh, we should be able to, to have a 1.0 a really soon. Um, so, uh, there are a, a lot of proposals uh, being discussed at this moment, uh, which is something great. Uh, one of, of them is a proposal for TPM node attestation that is based on, on an approach following a draft specification from the trusted computing group uh, that leverages dev ID certificate uh, to authenticate uh, each device. Um, there is also an ongoing effort uh, to add um, support uh, for AWS uh, KMS uh, managed um, signing keys. Um, since since this, this would be the, the first uh, key manager plugin that depends on an external service, uh, so what, one of the things that are um, under discussion is the like the exact behavior on failures, um, including timeouts and retries strategies. Uh, so that is uh, also being discussed now. Um, um, the, there is a proposal for updating the Inspire data store uh, to have a, a simple pluggable solution that uh, would be able to uh, to support both uh, SQL and key value stores. So again, a, a lot of discussion around that. Um, so, uh, so Augustine, we're a bit short on time. We have about three minutes left, uh, three to four. Okay, um, sure, yeah. So, uh, well, yeah, there are many, many different scenarios where uh, installing expiration is not possible. And that, uh, that obviously is, is a problem uh, in Aspire uh, where the, the workloads running in those environments can't access the workload API. Um, so um, there is a proposal under discussion to address that problem. Um, right now, it's focused on providing support for the for the different serverless compute uh, services uh, provided uh, by by the by the major cloud uh, providers um, as the like the primary use case. But the, the idea is to come up with uh, with a solution uh, or or a set of solutions um, uh, for the different scenarios. Um, that would allow uh, to be able to use um, Spire in those environments uh, where you, you can't uh, install an agent. Uh, and then quickly, uh, we, we, we had the, the forced rotation and revocation as pending road, roadmap item for a while. But now there is a, a, a concrete proposal to scope the work needed to provide a a quick, uh, reliable, and automated mechanism of uh, like recovering from key compromise. Uh, so the, the proposal defines uh, some, uh, some steps to accomplish that, uh, and also introduces some new APIs in order to, to achieve that process. Uh, 
Um, so that's under active discussion now. Um, and uh, there is a, a proposal to add the certificate, uh, certificate transparency support in Inspire uh, through a new plugin type. Um, and this, this is being discussed also. So let's try to go quickly through this. Uh, so we, uh, we, we, we already talked about the things that are keeping busy us now, but there are some other things that we have in the horizon. Uh, like in the implementation of the uh, break, break last mode. Um, it's, uh, it's well known that uh, Spire is a, since it's, it's a critical piece in any production system that relies on Spire uh, uh, to provide identities uh, on workloads. Uh, so if, if Spire is not able to properly provide new SVs or renew existing ones, uh, it, that will result in, in service uh, interruptions. So a break glass mode uh, would be a way to provide a mechanism that uh, allows Spire to continue providing identities, even in the states where um, a failure would prevent Spire from issuing SVs. Uh, so there is a, currently a request for comment issue for that. Although we, uh, we, we haven't actively discussed that yet. So that's something uh, pending. Uh, so the health check system in Spire uh, can, be, can be improved. We recently added the back endpoints to get information about uh, the agent and the server, but there is room to improve uh, the current uh, way to, um, to check the health of Spire server and agent uh, to make it more reliable and complete. Um, we also, uh, one of the things that we, we have in the Roma is to, to review the, the error messages to have, um, that we have uh, to make sure that they are not only descriptive uh, of the error, uh, but also that uh, helps uh, to have a resolution for the condition. Uh, we have some work to do in order to uh, productionize uh, Kubernetes deployments to adhere to security best practices. Um, and uh, we also plan to look at how does the, the core Spire expose service facilities to plugins and uh, plugins expose services Spire core can utilize in exchange. Um, and the, in terms of secretless authentication to uh, uh, Google Compute Platform and Microsoft Azure, we have plans to expand the, um, the OIDC Federation integration support uh, to those platforms. Agustine, uh, yeah. Amazon Web Services is already supported, correct? That's the reason why it's not in that list. Yeah, correct, yes. So this is only for, for future, future work. Great. Agustine, mm -hmm. we're at time. Thanks for the update. This, this is a lot. There's certainly a lot of momentum going up for the project. Very excited, fired up to see this. Uh, slides will be made available. I know you had a, a few extra slides, but we do need to move on to the, to the next se uh, section. Is there a place uh, you would like to call out folks to come check out perhaps the Spire repo or where can they find this information you've been talking about? Yeah, I guess the, the Spire repo and also looking at the, the roadmap that we have in the in the Spire repo. Uh, yeah, and obviously through Slack, uh, you can contact me. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, great updates from both the core of Spiffy and the core of Spire. There's a lot under development, a lot of new directions being contemplated in the future to further enhance the projects.